Hey folks, uh, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to dive into an exciting topic, five budgeting tips for early retirement success. So if you're dreaming of retiring or just want to be financially free sooner, these tips will set you on the right path. But before I get into that, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the channel itself and just tell you a little bit about me. Um, again, my name is Sabado. I retired at 51. And, you know, my goal and my mission, my personal mission statement is to uplift the human condition in any way that I can. And the way that I do it is providing, you know, down to earth, easy, pragmatic, easy to understand uh, retirement information. Um, I, you know, I realize and do recognize that it was it was I was incredibly fortunate to be able to retire. But I also have realized that, uh, you know, there are a lot of people that uh, just haven't had access to the information necessary in order to get themselves to that place. Um, and as I go around YouTube and look at early retirement channels and uh, people that have actually retired early, I don't see a lot of people that look like me, which leads me to believe that there's a need for the information to be out there. So I use this as an opportunity just to provide good information. I don't try to sell you anything. It's uh, I have no shtick. I just give you information and help you learn from me telling my story. So on that note, let's get into it. Now, did you know that nearly half of, uh, I'm sorry, near, yeah, nearly half of retirees believe they're going to outlive their retirement savings? That's a trip. And the concern is, you know, really prevalent over people that are fi over 50 years old. So, and, and it's funny because that's the way I feel. And, you know, I feel that my, my retirements and my, I'm sorry, my investments and, and everything else may not last through my retirement. And so I really needed to uh, get my head around what strategies can I do to, so I don't live this stressed out early retirement life because, you know, nobody wants that either. And so, you know, when you look at the, the thing that it told me is that, the, you know, the above statistic really highlights the importance of careful financial planning um, and the need for strategies to ensure uh, long-term financial stability. And so I, I went and took a look at and, and really talked to my financial person about some of the, you know, common challenges. And, and some of those common challenges are, you know, insufficient savings, uh, you know, people not saving enough for retirement. Um, healthcare costs, healthcare costs go up every year. And if you don't plan for those, it's one of those creepers. It could creep up and get you, uh, inflation. You know, it's funny. Most of my life, inflation was really this thing that was talked about, but really wasn't an issue. But as we saw in the last few years with inflation getting up as high as about 8%, that could easily derail, um, you know, our standard of living over time and, and derail our retirement. Um, one of the things that I'm, I'm very tied into and I spend a lot of time looking at and paying attention to are, um, is this the uncertainty around Social Security? Uh, there's a lot of talk. There was there was a report that came out not long ago that said that Social Security, if nothing's done, is going to be insolvent by 2034. And so, you know, that's only 10 years from now. And so. You know, and there are a lot of people who rely solely on Social Security. In fact, I'll tell you a little story. Uh, this morning, my wife and I went to uh, the food pantry, as we do, to, to give money. I'm sorry, to give food to uh, the underprivileged. And, you know, there's pantries that are set up around town with the express purpose of, of helping people that are in need. And um, so this morning we took some food. We took some water because it's it's hotter than heck out here right now. Um, and we took some, some just household goods, some, some cleaning products. So if people want to clean, if, you know, we got some, some, uh, clothes, some, some gently used clothes that we, uh, put there just to help people out because people really need a hand. And down the way, about a block away, I saw this gentleman, looked like an elderly gentleman who was standing. And I can tell that this gentleman was, was looking at the pantry, waiting for us to leave because, you know, quite frankly, he might've been embarrassed that he, re that we were, you know, that we were there. And so, um, and that he needs those, he needs those services. And so as we drove by, uh, the one thing my wife said is, you know, that might be an individual who was on social security and social security just isn't enough. You know, they say that social security isn't designed to carry a person's full lifestyle. And so if there are changes to social security, then what you could find is that perhaps you can have a place to live, but you can't afford to eat. And those are the people that, that use some of these pantries and so on. And so that was, uh, you know, that was one of the thoughts that went through our mind and, you know, it got me thinking again about the, 
some of the um, what's going to happen with Social Security. So if you're if Social Security is a big part of your plan, then just make sure you pay attention to that, because I know that if it's if it's on your mind, like it's on mine, um, then it's something that's going to have an impact. Um, you know, there's debt, you know, enter, um, you know, entering retirement with a significant debt, such as mortgages, credit cards and medical bills. You know, that could be a major, major burden. And, uh, you know, dealing with this debt on a fixed income uh, could be tough. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, one story about me and I, I, I don't think I've shared this on the channel is that back in about 2011, I w had a bunch of credit card debt and I just didn't think I was going to. You know, it was one of those situations where I was in a hole and I felt like I was going to sink and fall all the way through. And I, I started to think about how am I going to deal with this? And so what I did was I just started to make small payments on that debt. And I started to say whenever I got extra money, whenever I got a bonus from work or whenever I got an increase or whenever I got a tax refund, I would just put some money against it and do that because I knew that um, at that point, shoot, I wasn't talking about retiring. I was just talking about living a day-to-day -day life. And so if it was like that for me then, then think of how that could be uh, for you now. Um, you know, your longevity risk. People are concerned about outliving uh, your savings. It's, we, you know, life expectancies are continuing to go up. And, and look, I think it's great that modern medicine is doing what it's doing. But the fact of the matter is, is people are living longer. And so people were thinking that, well, I'm going to retire and have retirement savings until I'm 85. But then what happens if you make it to 95? Um, and my wife and I, we both set our plans up. So um, we make it to 100. So if we make it, to, so if we live to 102, we might be in trouble. But I think at 102, I probably won't care. Um, and then, you know, market volatility. And, you know, when you when you start looking at the markets going up and down, um, there's a, there's a there's a term called um, the, the sequencing of the sequence of returns. And it deals with the idea that having to take money out um, early in your retirement in a down market has a compounding impact on the viability of your long term plan, because then when it grows back, it's going to a lower percentage of what you have is. Uh, is, is is going to be there to grow. And so, you know, and again, those are things that not only do I think about, but so do the uh, the 50 percent of people over 50 and the 48 uh, percent of, of retirees. So, you know, these are things that, that sit out there in the world that, that we think about. And, you know, the lack of financial planning, you know, uh, many retirees have not engaged in comprehensive financial planning. Uh, this leads to poor investment choices, inadequate insurance coverages, and inefficient withdrawal strategies from your retirement accounts. Um, and you know, I want to use this as a as a plug. Um, I think it's critically important to have a conversation with a financial professional. Um, you know, if you go around YouTube, there's there's plenty of them there. And and I I, I don't I'm not a financial professional. I never played one on um, TV, and uh, I'm not going to play one on YouTube. But there's a a host of them out there and there are tools out there that, that can help you get there and we'll talk a little bit about some of those later but it's it's critical that you talk to a financial professional um the uh you know and it's funny because when i when i think about a financial professional i think about um you know if if, if i have a problem if the shingles are falling off my roof who am i going to call i'm gonna call a roofer if, uh, you know, I find that there's a leak in my plumbing, who do I call? I call a plumber. And then if there's a big, bad ghost in the neighborhood, who do I call? I call the Ghostbusters. But, you know, so if there's so for your financial issues, why would your financial stuff be any different? And and look, it's not only for financial issues, but it's really for planning. And I I think that, um, you know, if you go across YouTube, there's a lot of different opinions and um Everybody has one and there's competing opinions between a fee based advisor or an hourly advisor or those types of things. And, and what you really want to do is just find a fiduciary, somebody who's going to, um, ha you know, they make money when you make money and they're going to work, look for your best interests. I don't have an opinion one way or the other. I think that, um, you know, the goal of my channel is not to tell you what to do. Uh, my goal is to help you find peace of mind. And so on the, on the financial advisor or the financial professional front, the only thing I'm going to say to you is go with the arrangement that brings you the most peace. Because at the end of the day, 
The only thing you should be thinking about in retirement is peace of mind. If you have peace of mind, if you're paying 1% a year, then you're paying 1% a year. If you're paying X amount an hour, then pay X amount an hour. The question is, do you feel good about it? And as they say, if you like it, I love it. So, but I would, I, I think it becomes critical for you to, uh, to, um, seek out a financial professional to help you make sure that you ask some of these questions because there's things that creep up in retirement. Inflation creeps up. Taxes creep up. Um, changes in social security creep up. There's all these things that creep up. And, you know, of these eight, um, these eight concerns that I mentioned now, there's a whole host of other ones that I just couldn't think of that a financial advisor would help you get through and, and really help you in your unique circumstance, identify the ones that are pertinent to you and help you get through those. So talk to a financial professional and that's my advice on that. So let's move on to the, you know, the five tips that I have. And, and these are things that I use to help me, um, have the 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 best retirement that I can have. Uh, number one, tip number one, create a detailed budget. Start by tracking your income and expenses. Um, use budgeting tools and apps if you need to. Um, you know, this helps you identify areas where you can cut back. You know, a good friend of mine, and I say a good friend of mine, but he's a, he's really a colleague. There's a guy named Joe Kuhn. Uh, J O E last name is K U H N and it's Joe Kuhn loves retirement and he uses a tool. And again, I'm not, I'm, this is not a commercial. I'm just telling you this because I, you know, my goal is to give good information and this is good information for you. He uses a tool called uh, new retirement and new retirement is a software. And again, go to his channel cause he could tell you all about it. But, um, you know, a lot of people will use spreadsheets and, and things like that, but, uh, this will help you calculate, uh, you know, taxes and, and all of these different um, things that will impact your that can impact your your retirement picture. Um, but you want to make sure that you have um, you want to create a detailed budget because you want to know what you could spend. Uh, and again, it all goes back to peace of mind. And so if you know that you're going to spend two hundred dollars a month on groceries and you spend one fifty, guess what? Now you're not worrying about it, but you know where all your money's going and once you set up your budget, then you have things go out with automatic payments and then you don't have to worry about it because you know what's coming in, you know what's going out and so on. But what you don't want to do is, um, is, is get caught without understanding you know, where the money is. And don't look at it as a, as a list of restrictions because it's not. It's, it's really the, the number one tool to get you to financial freedom because you'll know where everything is going. Um, I know that they're on about a monthly basis. I just go through and I take a look at everything I'm spending. What am I spending on streaming services? If you're like me, your cell phone bill seems to go up every month and you never understand why. And so I go and I, I make the phone calls and try to understand and see what discounts I can get and so on. Um, and I, I just I do a, a just so I don't the stuff doesn't get out ahead of me because everything seems like it goes up. I don't know why. I do a scrub and I get there because I know what I budget and I adjust my budget as appropriate. But I, and I think you should do the same. Uh, number two, uh, tip number two, prioritize your savings. One of the best pieces uh, of advice my mother gave me when I was a kid was she always said, you know, pay yourself first. Um, you know, take a, a, you know, any part of what you make and use that to to pay yourself to save your money. Um, and automate that. So have it come directly out of your check into your savings account or, or whatever the case is. Um, because when you start to build those habits, those habits go. And, and what's interesting is you can't miss what you don't have. And it's one thing if you get $100 a week and then you go out and you spend $100 partying like a rock star. But if you get $80 a week, then you, you model your life around the fact that I get $80 a week. And so now that $20 a week, you forget about it. Next thing you know, you've, you, you got $20 a week up to $1,000 and you can go and do something else with it. And so, you know, automate those, um, automate those savings plans, but make sure you pay yourself first because you, if you wait until, um, the right time, then you're not going to do it because there's always going to be something out there, something or someone that's going to take, um, that, that's, that's looking to take your money. Uh, number three, uh, minimize your debt. Um, you know, when you, when you think about there's, there's certain debts that they say are good debts. Like, um, you know, if you, you got to buy a car, um, 
you know, a house because it appreciates in value. But there's really no reason that if you can get out of credit card debt to, to be in credit card debt. And I'll tell you, there's 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 a lot of viewpoints on, you know, people saying live within your means. And I know that people get frustrated with that. But the reality is if you're trying to retire, what you want to do is you want to get is you want to be have your debts as low as possible, because if if you have one hundred dollars to live and 20 percent interest on that hundred dollars, now you're paying one hundred dollars, one hundred and twenty dollars for one hundred dollars worth of value. And so you don't want and and what happened to me, I think I was mentioning earlier and, and when I was in debt is I was paying 21% interest on a credit card, paying a minimum payment, and every month the amount that I owed continued to go up. And again, that can completely uh, derail your your uh, um, your retirement. I mean, these are things like student loans, and and you know, and, and again, you can you may not be able to do it tomorrow, but folks, nothing happens, nothing good happens tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it's always a plan. It always takes time. You know, we look at Instagram, we look at Facebook, we look at YouTube and we say, wow, this Sabado guy retired at 51. But I don't think uh, I, I think it's easy to lose sight of all the pain and all the suffering and all the difficult times that I had to endure and all the sacrifices I had to make in order to get to this point. And so, you know, it's and it's it's no time to start like the present. So if, if you know, getting to retirement, whether it's early retirement retiring at normal age, or just having a peace of mind as you go into retirement. The key is, is the way you develop peace of mind is not having things that stress you out. I mean, it's that simple. And one of the things that can stress you out is debts. And if you're here, you're trying to figure out how do I get to that place? Um, and just like it snowballs and it gets high, once you start getting into the process of paying it, uh, that becomes a snowball as well, because again, that becomes more of a lifestyle as opposed to just an activity, kind of like we were talking about with saving. Uh, tip number four, uh, invest wisely. Uh, put money to work by investing in stocks, bonds, and real estate. Diversify. You know, I think it's important to diversify. You know, I, there's a lot of people that look at, and it's interesting because there's a lot of people that look at the stock market and they say, I'm going to put my money in NVIDIA. And it's like, that's cool, but NVIDIA is going to go up, NVIDIA is going to go down. But when you put money in the stocks, and again, I'm not a professional and I, I don't claim to be one. I don't purport to be one. I just try to pass on information in a way that I understand it the most. Is when you put money into a mutual fund, a mutual fund is a group of stocks. And so a lot of times what you find is one goes down, the other one goes up. And um, it, it minimizes your losses. But when they all go up, you could just, it's just, you, you get what's called compounding interest. And that, and the beauty of compounding interest is something that I can't express enough. Um, those of you that have 401ks, take a look at your 401 If you've had a 401k for the last year, take a look at where it is now compared to last year. There's no way you would have put that money on your own into a savings account. And guess what? If you did, you wouldn't have made that money because the markets are up 20%, 15% year over year. And so, you know, put your money away. And, I, I you know, it's easy to say invest in real estate. Well, folks, I live in California. Investing in real estate is difficult. So, but but the idea is is put your money away in places where you'll be able to uh, take advantage of of the returns when the market goes up. Because putting money in the mattress isn't going to do any good. It's actually going to move you behind. And most um, most bank accounts they pay one two percent. You can get in the money market accounts that are paying three four percent. But then you start going into you look at the uh, and I wish I would have brought the statistic with me, but you look at the uh, like the Nasdaq or you look at the S and P five hundred or you look at any of the any of the indexes, um, those are all up by double digits this year. And when you invest, and I, I could give you some some ideas, and I can talk to my financial person uh, and and give you some ideas, but you can get into you know, like the index funds, funds that are uh, invested, that are aligned with uh, what's in the with the with the indexes, the Nasdaq and the Dow and all of that. So that way, as that goes up, your money grows. But that's that's really how it grows over time. But again, talk to your financial professional because they can help you with a strategy to help you get to um, one that works, and it's it's based on your risk profile. You know, some people are more comfortable. Um, I've always believed that when you invest, it's always a five-year window. So if you could, 
If you have the stomach to wait five years before you're going to need the money, then you're going to be in a better place than you are now because usually you would have um, worked through all of the market cycles in that five-year period. Um, and if you have longer, great, but don't don't wait too long to do that because that's one of the key ways to save money. And then once you retire, it's interesting because they have the 4% rule. And they say if you go 60-40 bonds, uh, 60% stocks, 40% bonds, then you should be, able, you, depending on what your expenses are, you might be able to live off of the interest. So I know a lot of us look at people that win the lottery, we look at athletes and say, how are they so broke? They made all this money. They could just live off of the interest. Well, you can. You might be in a uh, situation to do that too. So again, talk to um, the financial professionals. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you what's interesting. Another side note, and I digress, so I apologize. I apologize in advance. You can admonish me in the comments. Is that, you know, people look at um, athletes and, you know, 80% of professional athletes go broke within four years of leaving professional sports. And so the reality is, is that they're not looking at this channel. So I'll tell you that by watching my channel, you are already getting a leg up because you're getting information that many of them may not have or may not have had or may not be following. So again, this is there's some secret sauce behind this that can help you get to where you need to be. It doesn't happen overnight. I never would tell you that anything that's good is going to happen overnight, but over time you'll be looking back saying, you know, that Sabado gave me some good information. I was able I knew some of the right questions to ask and I asked some of the right questions. And then the last um, tip is, you know, invest uh, invest wisely. I'm sorry, live below your means. Um, try to, I know, look, some, there's some people who are in a circumstance where they can't cut anything because all they're doing is they're eating soup and they're paying for their apartment and that's all they can do. And I get it. And I don't, this is not geared towards them. And I don't think people that are there are necessarily the ones um, that are you all. Um, because when you're, when you're looking at surviving, um, you know, it's like Maslow's, hi Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you're trying to fulfill your basic needs, then you're not trying to get to self-actualization. You're trying to survive. But if you're at a place where you're looking at trying to retire, and, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of on that in that tipping point area trying to get from A to Z, um, then one of the things that you can do is, is try, uh, you know, frugality in your life. Cut out unnecessary expenses. Think about one of the things that I did is I think about um, things that I have and I try to I try to understand, is this for me or is it for other people? You know, it's like I was watching a, a video today and a guy was talking. I think it was Charles Barkley. And he said, you know, people tell you, oh, you got this nice car, put some rims on it. He says, I can't even see the rims because I'm inside the car. The only, pre only reason I get nice rims is so you could see it. Don't worry about what, what other people think. Worry about what's, what works for you and what it is that you need. Um, I had a really nice car. I think I mentioned before I had a nice Audi at one point, And I realized that it cost me too much to maintain. So I got rid of that Audi. My, one of my neighbors says, hey, you're not going to be the guy in the neighborhood with a nice car anymore. And I said, well, you know, I'm not trying to be the nice guy in a nice car. Now he's telling me, man, I wish I could retire like you did. So but but try to exercise some frugality. Try not to be excessive. It's OK to get stuff that's necessary and things that you want. And, and I, I suggest that you do. And this is what my wife and I do is we take a look around and say, do we really need that? We buy things and if they bring value to us and they bring us joy and they spark joy, then by all means, we go out and do it. But what you start to realize is that it's not really about um, it's not really about spark and joy a lot of the times. Or as Susie Orman says, you know, people, then money, then things. And, um, you know, the things aren't that important because the things they kind of they kind of come and go. Um but, you know, remember, the less that you spend, the more you can you can invest and put away in retirement. And the other thing I'm not and I want to say this full disclosure, I am not the don't eat avocado toast and don't drink Starbucks. and You'll be able to retire stuff. I'll leave that to the people that actually believe that, um, because I think there's a certain amount of joy in drinking a certain type of coffee. That'd be like somebody saying, you know, Sabado, don't go play golf. Golf brings me joy. So I, if I don't do that, then I'm going to be miserable. Nobody needs to be miserable. So I'm not, I'm not going to say that. But, you know, and I just challenge us to take a look at, you know, are there things that we can cut out? And I, I tell you what, 
we all have them because when you get off of this channel, you're going to go back and say, you know, what? why did I buy this? I didn't need that song. So try to be proactive, you know, a little bit about that. And so, you know, so by following these uh, five budgeting tips, you know, you'll be well on your way to achieving uh, early retirement success. I almost guarantee it. Um, and effective budgeting can significantly impact your your early retirement success. So, you know, I, I what I would like to know is what are some of your budgeting tips uh, for early retirement in the comments? Uh, I'm sorry, for early retirement. You know, leave those, you know, in the comments. Let me know in the comments kind of what are some of the things that each of you are doing out there to help prepare yourself for some of the actions that you're taking. I'll leave those in the comments because it's not just for me. It's for other people. Other people, you know, I, I have a certain set of things that I've done uh, that have that have worked. And there's other things out there. I, I in no way represent the entire universe of all that is right in anything. Uh, but I do have a certain perspective. But there's other perspectives that and things that may work better than what I did. So, you know, share some of the things that you might have done that, that might have helped you. Uh, share, share those in the comments. And, you know, if you found this video helpful, please, you know, give it a thumbs up uh, and, and consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, it helps the channel. Uh, it helps me continue to uh, align my content to what, you know, you need. Uh, there's people that need different pieces of information, but, but let me know and then hit the bell icon to get notified um, of the latest content. I, I try to put out content uh, a couple times a week. Uh, I just started uh, this past week with uh, on Sunday evenings. I'm sorry, on Sundays, I try to put out a little bit of inspiration just to get you going in the week because, you know, one of the hardest days for everybody is Monday. And so I, I try to put something out on Monday to, uh, to, to help us stay focused. Uh, I, I try to put out a, a new video, a long form video like this on Wednesday, and, I, and there's a whole host of topics. And on uh, Sundays, uh, I'm sorry, on Saturdays, I also put out a, another long form uh, content. So that way you have something to, to kind of look at through the course of the week. Because the idea here is, is not to bombard you with a, a bunch of information that you can't hold on to. But the beauty of having a channel like this is you can always go back and, and you can reference it. And I'd also suggest that there's other topics or other items that you'd like to have discussed please leave those in the comments. I, I read all the comments and I, I respond to all the comments. Um, you know, and if you, if you have a critical comment, I, I read those too, because the key is, is I always want to be better for you. And I owe it to you because, uh, you know, the reality is you could have been anywhere in the world right now, but you're here with me and I appreciate that. So on that note, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.